So one important concept that you'll need to understand if you're getting into web development is something called webhooks. And the way webhooks kind of work is if you have a process that takes quite a long time, for example, I'm on this tryhairstyle.com site, which I'm kind of giving a little shout out to uh, Mehul Sharma, who is on Twitter here, if you want to follow him. He also has a YouTube channel. I'll put the links to both his YouTube and Twitter in my description. But I saw that he launched this product. And I kind of asked him a couple of questions about how it works. And basically, you upload a picture of yourself. And based on the image that you upload, he basically tries out various hairstyles on your own face, right? So you see here, I have a bunch of different options. So that would be me with a uh, long hair. This would be me with like a 70, 80 style mullet. So you might ask, how is this related to webhooks? And it turns out when you're dealing with AI related stuff, such as if you need to run an AI model on a replicate.com, which is what I use in the past to kind of use stable diffusion. It's a cool service that basically allows you to use on-demand um, stable diffusion and AI models. So for example, if you go to explore and type in stable diffusion and go down here, you'll notice that they give you an example of a webhook. Okay. All right. So what exactly is a webhook? Okay, so let's pretend that we have a user here that needs to make request to our service. Okay, so I have an API. Let's say it's a Next.js application. It's deployed on www.myapp.com slash API slash thing. And let's just make the endpoint um, image. Okay, so a user in your system would make a post request to this API endpoint. And what this would need to do is it would also need to make a request to replicate. All right, so let's just put a cloud here and say third party replicate.com. So let's make a request and I'll just say use AI model. Step one is like do action in your system. So a user does an action in your system. That's going to call an API endpoint on your application. Your application inside your node code is going to make a request to replicate using these examples that they kind of give you. So you might want to just copy some of this and use it. But these things can take a while. These things can take quite some time to spin up, especially if you're using like a custom model that could take two to three minutes to spin up. And you can't just have a user sitting there with a spinner for three, four minutes, especially in your API, because you'll run into timeout issues depending on where you deploy. You'll run into costs because now you have an API that's just sitting there using up compute. So instead, what you want to do is you want to use something called webhooks, where as you saw in the documentation, you can pass a webhook URL. Okay. So over here, I'm just going to paste in the webhook URL. And what this basically does is you can tell third party services, like when you're done with your processing, I need you to go ahead and just make a post request with the information that I'm looking for to myapp.com. And then you put whatever custom API endpoint that you want. So I do slash API slash, um, I don't know, you could do like images slash done. You could also have like an image ID like this. I'll just say step three, generate AI image. And then at some point, this needs to call back to your API and say, hey, we finished processing. And I'll say, call your web hook. And so this is a way to basically allow your system to not just sit there with wasted threads, just waiting for an event. Instead, we know that this third party service is going to just notify us when it's done. Okay. And this is all related to the back end side of things. This is typically the approach if you have a, uh, an API that's integrating with a third party service. This is the approach that you do to kind of decouple these systems and have them notify you when stuff is done. You might have seen this with GitHub, like when you do a commit to GitHub and push it to your branch, typically all of these other CI CD pipeline services like GitHub Actions, Circle CI, even Vercel, those are listening for webhooks on your repo that GitHub.com is going to actually call their services so that they can trigger off a build and start doing things. So overall, webhooks are very important. You're going to see them all the time. And then whenever you're dealing with third party services, you need to understand how they work. Okay, so how do you notify the user in the UI when the webhook comes over the wire? Now, this is where you can do a variety of things. Okay, step one, if you want to, which is probably the most inefficient way, is you can do polling. There's long and short polling. Basically, this UI, the browser, is just going to periodically hit your endpoint do a database request when it hits the endpoint and check, is my ID done? Is my work ID done? Is my, in our case, image ID, is it done processing? And if it is, you'll just go ahead and update the UI and then you'll stop doing that polling. Like I said, not the most efficient because you have tons of users all polling at the same time. You're just doing a ton of requests on your API and it could cause some additional costs and traffic. Um, the second approach 
which I personally haven't even done yet, is something called server-side events. And there's a way to basically have your browser and your server kind of make a connection where your server can just push events directly to users, okay? So it's like not WebSockets, because I do think it's unidirectional in terms of where the data flows. But this is another approach that you can do, that you can notify your users when stuff is done. And then the last approach, which you've probably seen, is web sockets. The so web sockets are a bi-directional connection between your API and your user so that your user can send events to your server and your server can send events back. Now, I would say web sockets are more beneficial when you have uh, this need to like send a bunch of events back and forth, like a game or some type of like stock system or something. When it comes to just needing to send a single notification to a user, maybe WebSockets are a little bit overkill because there are some design implications with using WebSockets. And typically that means that you have to have a stateful API and you have to figure out ways to make sure that you scale these stateful APIs correctly. Often users will randomly connect to any server. So you need to make sure that that's not gonna be causing an issue. What do I mean by that? You might have this behind a load balancer. For example, you might have two or three of these. The user will make a request to this. The user might make a request to this server because you're doing like a round robin load balancing. This is going to do the whole replicate thing. Your webhook might actually come back and invoke this one, but your WebSocket connection was to this one. So this user never gets the notification. So then you end up having to like pull in some type of message broker. Let's just pretend this is like ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ or I don't know, AWS, SNS. So the issue is that this is gonna call potentially the wrong server, right? It's gonna call the webhook on the wrong server. And in order to notify the user who's connected on this WebSocket, you kind of have to like broadcast an event to some type of message broker so that the message broker knows how to notify the actual server that has the WebSocket connection. And then that can notify the user, okay? So I would say WebSockets get a little bit complicated, which is why you probably want to use like a WebSocket service. I know AWS has an API gateway V2 WebSockets that I've used at work on my projects. Um, so instead of having to do this whole message broker approach, you just say send an event to user who has a connection ID of one, two, three, and that's going to figure out how to basically connect that user. There's also Pusher and other WebSocket servers, but I just wanted to give you a good overview of like why webhooks are so important and how like this whole asynchronous processing and messaging kind of works on a system and how it can kind of get a little bit complex fast um, if you you know are dealing with web sockets. But go give tryhairstyle.com a try. I wanted to give a shout out to another indie hacker, another creator and YouTuber. Um, I think he's doing a good job and he made a really cool application. I like it a lot. Other than that, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out or talk and ask questions to other developers. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.